when Jesus gives the, the disciples a command, go and make disciples of all nations. We call that the Great Commission and consider it our marching orders as Christians. But before that, Jesus gives other instructions when he appears to his disciples after his resurrection. John chapter 20, our gospel for today says, When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As a father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Just think about these words. As a father has sent me, so I send you. Think about what Jesus was sent to do by God. Just try to wrap your brain around that just, just for a bit. Think about the awesome responsibility Jesus was entrusted with. Think about the effort that he had to put into his mission. Thankfully, he had his father's blessing and trusted that his father always listened to him and not only gave him the power to fulfill his calling, but would see him, see him through it all. Lord knows it wasn't easy for Jesus, but Jesus was faithful to God. And God was faithful to Jesus. When we look at the disciples, we can see some pretty messed up people who, in spite of everything that they had seen and experienced with Jesus, for three whole years, they were still very human with human failings. This is why Jesus never intended to just throw them to the wolves without any support. Verse 22. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. We are given the same task as was given to the original disciples. We too are sent out in the world as apostles of Jesus to teach about and share the love of God. Today is Pentecost Sunday, where we celebrate what is considered the birth of the church. Acts chapter 2 says, When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Not only did Jesus breathe the, the Holy Spirit on them, but on the day of Pentecost, God also breathed the Holy Spirit, the, the, the Ruach, on them as well. It was by the gifts of the Spirit that they were able to do all the things Scripture tells us. As I said, we are also given the same task as was given to the original disciples. We too are sent into the world as apostles of Jesus to teach about, to share the love of God. But we do not go unarmed either. We are given gifts of the Spirit. Every one of us. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. There are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Not to, uh, to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, to other, another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the sermon of gifts, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All 
of these are activated by one and the same spirit. We're lost to each one individually, just as the spirit chooses. In other words, we're given gifts by the spirit, even if we don't feel very gifted. Paul gives some examples, the healing, working in miracles, tongues, prophecy, so on and so on. Each is given as the Spirit chooses. In other words, as is needed for the task God sets before us. Some gifts may seem greater than others, but they are all needed. Verse 12, for just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. What Paul is saying is that individual body parts, say arm, liver, toe, they're simply an arm, liver, or toe. They're useless by themselves, but you, know, you put them all together, we get this incredible, incredible human body. And it's when we all come together as a church body with all of our complementary gifts that incredible things happen. But it takes all of us. I want you to consider some, ex some other examples of gifts. Bill Mooring in our church has a gift of encouragement working with Synod Candidacy Committee. He's done it for years, helping to lift up and encourage pastors in, in, in seminary, or should I say pastors in, in, in training, in seminary. Norm, Norm has the gift of teaching. Leslie has a gift of putting up with Norm. Sheila, Holly, Jennifer, Abby, and many others have the gift of teaching, of service, and working with you. In Tim, Pete, and Chris, you have the opportunity of watching three people working to discern their gifts of ministry, developing those gifts, and continuing to discern what God is calling them to do with those gifts. Others of you have the gift of prayer, of visiting people, of leadership, hospitality, faith, and many others. I promise you, you all have gifts of the Spirit, but we don't all have the same gifts, nor should we. Our gifts complement each other, and it's when, you, when we all come together with our gifts that we can do the work of God. Our gifts are from growing the church, not just growing the Lutheran Church of Muhammad, but God's church, the Christian church, whose purpose is to share the gospel and worship the Lord. Soon, we will come together again, and we will use all of our gifts, both great and small, but all critical to growing God's church, including the Lutheran Church of Muhammad. And we're going to come together and we're going to do this with renewed energy and excitement. Now get ready. We're going to do this. Amen.